One of the most challenging things to do sometimes is to trust God even though you can't see him. How many of you have ever experienced something like this before? Let me know in the comments. However, sometimes serving God means having to trust him even when things get complex or uncertain. God always has our best interests in mind and God always has the good plans for our lives even though if even though it can seem complicated at the moment. Remember, if you trust God, you will be able to look back and see how he led you, even when you didn't know what was happening. We've been taking a journey on what a fresh start or a clean slate with Christ looks like. Over the past couple sessions, we've discussed how we can accept a fresh start and what happens after God wipes our slate clean. He doesn't intend for us to muddy it back up. In fact, a clean slate allows us to begin to do things God's way. If we say yes and stay close to him, he will lead us and guide us in the way that he would have us go. There's a story in the Bible that really puts a test of faith into perspective, primarily when God didn't initially provide a way out. The story of Abraham and Isaac can serve as that reminder to us. God is looking for our trust and obedience through fully surrendering to him even when we don't understand it. Suppose you're familiar with the story's background. In that case, it may seem horrifying. I mean, what kind of God tells a parent to sacrifice their child? What kind of God would tell a parent to sacrifice their only child after years of praying for this baby? If we examine the text, we can take comfort in knowing that God never actually intended for Abraham to sacrifice Isaac. The whole event was designed to be a test of Abraham's faith. It was a chance to show how far he would go in obeying God. The law God gave after actually strictly prohibited child sacrifice. Abraham must have been surprised at God's command. But, however, Abraham obeyed. Abraham's faith in God and his willingness to obey him is genuinely incredible. Not only was he willing to sacrifice his son, but he maintained the faith that somehow his son would be returned to him. He said to his servants, then we will come back in Genesis 22.5. Somehow Abraham was confident that despite his command, that God would preserve Isaac. And Isaac too showed faith. He submitted to being placed on the altar in obedience to God's command. Abraham passed the test, test and God averted the death of Isaac. Abraham discovered that God is good and just and can be trusted even when we can't understand him. And remember, just like Abraham, if you trust God, you will be able to look back and see how he led you even when you didn't know what was happening at the time. So let's actually read that story. Genesis 22, long story, verses 1 to 19. I will try and make it entertaining at least. Here we go. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. Then he said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose up early in the morning. He saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place that God told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place from a distance. Abraham said to his young man, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there and worship and then return to you. So Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it on, his, on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and had a knife. So the two of them walked together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Here is the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to, a place that, came to the place that God had told them. So Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on the wood. Then Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to, called out to him from the heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not lay your hands on the boy or, any, or do anything to him. Because now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your only from me. 
Then Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behind him was a ram caught in the thickets by his horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up as a burnt offering in the place of his son. Abraham called the place, the name of the place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it will be provided. Then the angels of the Lord called to Abraham out a second time and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done thing, done the thing, and you have not withheld your son, your only son. I will indeed bless you, and I will indeed multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens, as the sand that is on the seashore. Your descendants will possess at the gate, possess the gate of their enemies. Through your offspring, all the nations of the earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went to Beersheba. Then Abraham lived in Beersheba. So Abraham's faith in God wasn't built in a day. It was piece by piece, year by year. God built Abraham into a man of faith. Abraham's test is an example of how God may, God's plan may not be known in the moment, but when we look back, we can see the faith, faithfulness and grace woven throughout the whole story. And there's a lot we can learn from Abraham's obedience in today's story. Abraham trusted God, and even when he didn't understand. And sometimes we say things like, I'm not going to obey or believe until I understand it all. But that is making ourselves equal with God. God doesn't avail his plan to us all at once. If he did, we wouldn't need to trust him. Abraham didn't debate or seek counsel from others. He knew what to, he knew what to do and employed no stalling tactics. Abraham trusted God, even when he didn't feel like it. There is no line in this text about how Abraham felt. Not because he didn't feel, but because he walked by faith, not feelings. God had trained Abraham, bringing him to this place of great trust. In Genesis 21, God asked Abraham to give up his son Ishmael in a less brutal way. God used that and everything else to train Abraham and build great faith in him. So what does all that have to mean today? We can trust God with our relationships. We can trust God with our future. We can trust God with our family and the people we love. We can trust God with our heart's desires. We can trust that God has a plan for us and he knows what's best for us. Remember, if you trust God, you'll be able to look back and see how he led you, even if you didn't know what was happening at the time. Wraps us up for part four. Be back tomorrow for session five, the finale. As always, stay blessed.